Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the DIY LED for Noobs series. And thank you so much for all the great comments. You guys are really driving this series and you're really driving this channel to help everybody out there that's interested in making their own lights help pull it off and pull it off successfully with great performance. Also want to give a big shout out to the guys on Roll It Up, on the Roll It Up forums in the LED lighting section. I'm not doing anything new or anything groundbreaking here. All I'm doing is repackaging all of these guys' great ideas and all the time and labor they put into testing and making spreadsheets. I'm just repackaging that for you guys to watch on YouTube. So big shout out to all those guys. So when we're talking about heat sinking for LEDs, we need to talk about active and we need to talk about passive cooling, okay? Active is just a piece of heat sink with a fan on it. Something like this. This is the Arctic Alpine 64 Plus. It's got a nice flat base plate and it works really well with the CXB 3590 for that reason. See how much bigger this cob holder here is for the 3590 than the uh, 3070? So you, you need a little bit bigger base plate and this heat sink definitely provides that larger uh, base plate. However, you can use 3590s on some of the smaller models. You just might have to be a little more inventive with the way you mount it if you're using a big cob holder like that. So the advantage to this, they're cheap, they're lightweight, they're 12 to 15 bucks, some as low as $9. But the disadvantage is you need a fan for every single cob, which means you gotta connect a bunch of fan wires. There are some solutions for that, like these little bus, pa these little, uh, bus packages that you can just plug eight of these into and then you, know, you have a positive and negative lead out. So look into something like that at Amazon if you're going to go with the CPU cooler route. It's lighter weight, it's cheaper, but you know it's a little messier looking and you got a lot of crap to deal with. For the main focus of this video, we're going to be talking about the Heatsink USA profiles. And before we get uh, too far into this, I do want to let you guys know about a discount code over at uh, heatsinkusa.com and the code is called Give Me 10 at checkout. That's going to be good for 10% off through the entire month of December 2015. So if you guys are about to buy some heat sinks, check out that discount code and save a couple bucks. Now, when we're talking active versus passive, these little pieces of aluminum foil illustrate the amount of surface area you need per heat watt for a passive heat sink. This one here is 17 inches squared or 110 centimeters squared, and that's per each individual heat watt. This demonstrates an active heat sink. This is six square inches or 40 centimeters squared, and this is per heat watt as well. So as you can see, if you're interested in running passive, that's with no cooling fans on top, you need almost triple the amount of surface area in heat sink. So I want to mention that up front, and we'll show you how to calculate out the size heat sink you're going to need for the various different configurations. Now, we were talking last video, we've been talking about a lot of different configurations, but I'd like to go back to this common configuration, four Cree CXB 3590s at 14 milliamp okay you can run that on the HLG 185 1400 like we talked about before now this particular configuration is going to get is going to be about 200 watts of dissipation at the wall okay that's what you're going to see on a kilowatt now this is 56 percent efficient okay 56 percent of the energy that enters these LEDs becomes photons which means that 44% of the energy that enters the fixture goes directly to heat. Okay, and when I say heat watts, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the percentage that is not turned directly into photons that goes directly into heat right into the heat sink. So that's the starting point. That's where we figure out how much direct heat we're going to need to sink off of these LEDs. Um, one other quick thing to mention, these are some calculations also done by Supra um, on page two of his thread that I want to talk about. This configuration, this 200 uh, watt configuration, uh, will end up giving you about 110 par watts. And if you're illuminating a two foot by three foot space with this configuration, you're going to end up with about 820, 824 ppfd, that's the photon density. If you extrapolate this out to a two foot by four foot area, um, so a lot of you guys have been asking about two by fours. What can I do with a two by four? Um, it's going to drop because your space increases, your density drops. So that's going to drop to about 620 ppfd. Okay. If you want to bump this, uh, if you're running a two by four with this config, guys, and you want to bump this ppfd up a little bit, you're going to need to go up to the HLG 240, okay, that's going to run five cobs, and you can get 
an additional cob right in the center and you can bump this number up a little closer or exceed 800 ppfd if you're running a two by four with this configuration so i wanted to throw out that little uh you know those little calculation numbers so you can get a little a little bit more out of this video than just how to heat sink it so going back to our heat sink calculations we know that we have 44 percent of the energy coming off of this fixture going directly into heat watts 44 percent straight to heat so what are our heat watts for this fixture? Okay, our heat watts are 88 watts. 88 watts of heat that are going right into the heat sink. So for those 88 heat watts, like I talked about before, we're gonna need either six inches, six square inches of heat sink for active cooling, or we're going to need 17 square inches for passive cooling, that's passive, that's active. So what that ends up equaling out to is we need 528 inches squared of surface area for active or 1500 inches squared for passive. So how do you figure out how many square inches of surface area a given, a given profile has? Well, you go over to roll it up once again and you go to the DIY heat sink thread and there's a nifty little chart, a little spreadsheet there that tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Um, so I've done the calculation here. A 5.886 inch wide heat sink by 36 inches long ends up giving us 1,450 total square inches of surface area. Okay, so if you're going to want to run this configuration passively, uh, we would need 1500 square inches. This particular heat sink only has 1450, so you'd have to bump this up from 36 up to about a 38 inch heat sink to carry this heat load passively. Now, for active, let's figure out how much we would need for an active heat sink. We need 528 inches squared, so I know based on the spreadsheet that I've seen on Roll It Up that the 5.886 inch profile has a surface area of 40 inches squared per inch of heat sink length, per one inch of length. So we just take the 528 and we divide that by 40 and we end up with about 13 inches. So if you took a 13 inch section of this heat sink, the 5.886, you could fit all four cobs very easily on this heat sink. You put a nice six inch fan over the top and you would be able to actively cool these four cobs at this drive current, okay? Now that's not to say it's the most optimal, um, but that's the bare minimum you, you need to get the job done. I always like to go a little bit larger for my heat sinks, not just for the safety of the cob itself, but also for the spread. You want to spread this light out over the garden. That's, that's one of the main motivations of why we're going with DIY LED, because if we wanted just a lot of wattage of LED, we could buy a pre-made fixture that's like a one foot by one foot, you know, 400 watt fixture, but the spread isn't there. So we spend a little bit more money going with a little bit larger heat sink so we can get the spread, we can get the safety, we can get the additional heat dissipation. Now let's do an example where we work backwards and I'll show you the math there. Let's say you're browsing around eBay or Alibaba or one of the other sites and you come across a nice big badass heat sink. Maybe it's used from some old um, amplifier or something like that and you want to know hey man can I use this heat sink for LEDs so what you end up doing is you look at the heat sink profile hopefully there's some documentation online about the measurements and you take all of the measurements of the base plate let's say it's 10 inches long it's big old heat sink um, let's say each of these fins is um, 0.125 long 0.125 wide they're two inches tall um, you go through and you add all, you add all the different links here up and down and you come up with the total perimeter okay let's just say for example this heatsink profile much like the 10 inch on heatsinkusa.com has a 140 inch perimeter okay you take that by its length uh, let's say 12 inch length or one foot and you multiply this out 140 times 12 that gives us 1680 square inches, inches squared. That's our total surface area, okay? Now we take our total surface area of 1680 and we divide that by six inches per heat watt 
say heat watt, which is equal to about 280 heat watts of dissipation. Or we can take our 1680 and divide by 17 inches per heat watt, and we get about 100 watts of heat dissipation passively. So you can see the massive difference there of what a little fan will do for the amount of heat watts it'll take. So we know how many heat watts it'll take, 280 heat watts active. And we take that active heat and we divide it by 0.44, as you remember, was our percentage of heat watts for the CXB configuration. And we get 636 total dissipation watts at 56% at efficient. So if you use a big chunky heat sink like a 10 inch profile by a foot long, you can get some serious dissipation watts out of it with active cooling. Now with that active cooling on a big profile like that, you're probably going to need a couple fans. But that just kind of goes to show you some of the calculations that you can make to figure out the heat sink size for your application. Okay guys, so I hope you get the gist of how to calculate how big of a heat sink you need for your application. Here's the thread I was talking about, heat sinks for DIY LED lamps. That's under grow room, indoor growing, LED and other lighting section. It's uh, another thread from Supra. I would recommend clicking this spreadsheet that he made and just right click it and you know save the image to your desktop so you can reference it later. Um, here it is on my desktop and you can see all the different profiles. The one we mainly discussed today is the 5.886 and, and this is where all the numbers come from that I was using for the calculations. So there you go guys, uh, that should give you all the information you need and as always please feel free to ask whatever questions you need to in the comments section. Like I said the comments section is what's driving this whole series forward and getting you guys the information that you need all in one place, all on my channel. Um, so for the next video I think it's time for us to start sticking some of these components together. We'll cover soldering uh, one wire, multiple wire, soldering LEDs. Um, we'll cover some of the common connectors that I think are going to make your life uh, a lot easier. And I've condensed some of these common, really cool little connectors all into one place on my thread. So I'll reference that and I'll give you the link to some of the common connectors as well. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.